My name's Stacey Dooley and I'm here to have a chat with a very inspiring, very impressive young lady. Her name is Amy Davis and she is a meningitis survivor. So she herself contracted the disease when she was just 18 years old. Our GPs are now offering 17, 18 year olds and other people going to university for the first time a free meningitis vaccination. I can't wait to meet her. So my understanding is that um, you were diagnosed with meningitis when you were just 18. Yeah, it was completely out of the blue. I had no idea that could even happen to somebody my age. I always thought it was kids, so. But this is it. I think you don't necessarily associate meningitis with, you know, late teens, early adults. We think of toddlers. Yeah, but actually 18 is like the second highest risk, um, especially students, so it's really important. But I had no idea at the time. So I don't think you realise until something like that happens how dangerous it actually is at that age. This is it. So, so take me back, we'll start from the beginning. You were presumably feeling okay one minute and then a bit poorly the next? Yeah, so I was working as a care assistant at the time. I felt fine. And the night before, I felt just a bit poorly. I thought I had the flu, had achy arms, just felt generally unwell. Went to bed just presuming it, I'd feel better the next day, but obviously that wasn't the case. So it was that quick? It was 24 hours? Yeah, I went to bed at about 7, really early, and then by 5 o'clock the next morning my mum woke to check on me and I was covered in the rash from head to toe. So, so this rash that we're all familiar with, it was all over your arms, over yeah. your chest? I was covered from head to toe. My mum, being an ex-nurse, knew straight away that what it was and she called, phoned for an ambulance straight away. Yeah, it was really scary. I remember just looking at my dad as the ambulance man was injecting me with all the antibiotics. And I remember looking at my dad thinking, this is serious, because I just remember seeing my dad's face and he looked so worried. I'll never forget that bit. As a doctor, I'm here to present you with some crucial facts about meningitis and septicemia. Meningitis and septicemia are truly devastating illnesses that can kill rapidly within hours and leave survivors with significant disabilities like brain damage, epilepsy, blindness, deafness and even loss of limbs. Meningitis is an infection of the protective membranes around the brain and septicemia is commonly known as blood poisoning. So then you're off to hospital? Yeah, so I met with obviously all the doctors and stuff and then I was put in an induced coma for two weeks. I knew something was really serious because they all had to come and say goodbye before I was put in the coma because obviously for them I had a 10% chance of living so they had to obviously say their goodbyes there and then because it, they may never have seen me after that. And my parents would be there, my sisters whole rubbing my hands because where my hands were covered in gangrene from the septicemia they'd be rubbing my hands saying please like don't let them be amputated trying to keep them warm and get the blood flow going. And, and, and you spoke of um possibly having to have your, your fingers amputated and, yeah. and other parts of, of your body. What was the situation? What went on? My feet were the biggest problem. Okay. They were black, like really black. All the toes were like just dead. Um, so for the, for the three months I was in the ward, they'd had to wear these big boots that straightened out my feet because my I had foot drop from where I'd been lying down for so long. And then um, I used to have the tissue viability nurses come in and pick off the gangrene bits, which was the most traumatic thing I've ever been and had in my life. Um, and there they just pulled off toes and... They, they pulled off your toes? Yeah, while well, I had gas and air. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because they were just all dead. And you were 18 at the time, and you're what age now? 23 now, so you're yeah. 23 now, and, and you're still having to go back for checkups and you're still having to yeah so i had um my leg amputated after so a year about just about a year and a half after being having the meningitis they decided that my um left foot was too infected it was starting to travel up my leg the infection okay and affecting the bone so they decided to amputate that one um but yeah continues still now i've got joint problems i had a hip replacement when i was 21 from where the meningitis had um like killed the bone and yeah i've got um, arthritis in my ankles and my knees as well. It sounds like there was no part of your body that wasn't affected by meningitis. No, it, that's the thing with meningitis, it affects everywhere. I think it was more the fact that my age, I was supposed to, I always think now, like, I lost my, my fun times. You had six months of that and then I was ill, so. 
In response to a sharp increase of cases in the lesser known but incredibly dangerous strain of meningococcal bacteria known as MenW, a vaccine has been introduced to offer protection to young people and teenagers against meningitis and septicemia. 18 year olds and those starting university for the first time are eligible for the brand new free vaccination. You may not know but up to 25% of teenagers carry the meningococcal bacteria in the back of their throats or in their noses. Teenagers are particularly at high risk of contracting meningitis or septicemia because they're mixing with lots of new people in close proximity, particularly when they start university. It's so important that teenagers and students are really aware of this and how it can, it, you are really high risk, mm -hmm. especially with being in close contact with people living in halls and going out and things. You really need to be really aware of it. I'm flaws. I just truly have nothing but admiration for you. You know, your hair's falling out, you've got scabs on your face, you're feeling really self conscious. You said the nurse was picking your toes, toes off. off. Yeah. You then lose a leg. Yeah. You know, your family are told there's a 10% chance you'll survive. And here you are years later going, it's cool, no yeah. one panic, just get this jab. <laughs> yeah, just make sure everybody gets the jab now because you don't want it to happen to you. Bang that drum. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You'll be standing outside the surgeries yeah. going, are you here for your jab? Yeah, <laughs> I will, I will. Form an orderly queue. Yeah, yeah. Possible ways of spreading meningococcal bacteria include kissing and even sharing toothbrushes and cigarettes. Meningitis and septicemia can develop rapidly and symptoms can be similar to those when you get a hangover or if you develop flu. The symptoms of meningitis can include fever, vomiting, increased sensitivity to light, drowsiness and a rash which classically doesn't go away when you press a glass against it, amongst many others. If you develop these symptoms you should seek immediate medical advice, whether or not that means calling an ambulance or going down to your nearest hospital. So I really hope that my personal experience of contracting this disease will encourage others to get this vaccination. Yeah.